We'll go ahead and begin. Brandon is here with Reagan Smith. They are the project engineers, and he has some information relative to the Crates Lane Improvement Project to go over for the benefit of all. Brandon, thank you. We appreciate you being here, and we'll let you go ahead and proceed if you don't mind. Yeah, glad to. Uh, I've been told to, to try to hang out here in front of the uh, podium and microphone because this is being recorded for later, so I'll, I'll try to do that so that this can be not just seen but also heard. Um, we do we do have a project uh, going on for quite a while. I know, uh, I think at least staff and, and uh, Mayor and Alderman are aware of it. It's been awarded, um, I think, in the last few weeks, maybe the last six weeks or so. Um, there's been, been, I think, increasing discussion and, and maybe some confusion about road closures and detours and things uh, because of some signs that uh, got it put up a little bit prematurely. And this was... a. Uh, uh, I think uh, this this discussion and this informational session is is a little bit in response to that to make sure that everybody has a chance to to hear what the actual plan is. Some of those signs will be coming down and moving uh, because after our August second meeting uh, last month, a special called meeting, we did meet with the contractor, met with uh, Brian and staff, and uh, went through their approach to the project, changed things a little bit. Um, in, in ways that we think benefit both the contractor but also the, the traffic flow and, and how that will go during construction. So we're going to go through that tonight um, and, and be happy to certainly take questions. Uh, I, I can have several uh, maps and slides we can go through. If, if it's more of a presentation is desired, that's fine. If there's answer questions along the way, I'm happy for it to be more of a, more of a forum and, and open house discussion as well. So uh, to get started, uh, over here on the screen, we do have a, a map of the area. You can see uh, generally you know, I-840 I to the north, Thompson Station Road to the south, Columbia Pike uh, to the left, uh, just barely uh, barely getting the community center where we are there on the left-hand side, and then I-65 to the right. Uh, and what this map shows is the, the larger project area, and, and really the, the project is going to go from near Clayton Arnold Road on Kreitz Lane, uh, through Clayton Arnold Road, over the over the hill, uh, the, the, the high hill that's there, beside the new sections of Canterbury and, and Avenue Downs development. And then it's going to end at the boundary where Avenue Downs and Bridgemore, uh, that boundary right right about there where my pointer is. So it's going to start, you know, just just over here west of Clayton on the Road, and it's going to end right there as you as you're between Canterbury and Bridgemore. There's going to be a little a little bit of it north and south on Clayton on the Road just to tie in grades so that those two roads have appropriate approaches. As we get into talking about construction and get into talking about detour routes, uh, there's really kind of a two pronged approach to detouring traffic. There's regional traffic. Uh, that needs to be just deflected completely away from the area. And that's, uh, that's going to be uh, probably a lot of folks that come up from Spring Hill and, and, and filter through Kreitz Lane uh, or maybe Pantol Road to, to go to places north. Um, as, as Kreitz Lane is under construction, that traffic needs to stay on your Columbia Pike corridor. It needs to stay on your Lewisburg Pike or, or at least go down Pantol Road to Buckner. Uh, it doesn't. We don't want it. We don't want it going through the detour routes. We don't want it going through the project while that area is under construction. So we will, from the outset, uh, before the project begins, set up a detour route for Kreitz Lane that will have signs on Columbia Pike to direct traffic down Columbia Pike using Thompson Station Road around Pantall, and then back up Pantall to Kreitz Lane, avoiding the the project area and avoiding. Uh, you know, any you know, if we if we started the detour in here, then all of that traffic winds up in those neighborhoods where we want to keep it out of. So a big, larger regional detour will be to use Thompson Station Road, Columbia Pike, Pantall Road to move that traffic uh, on the major thoroughfares that are already in place and not on any local neighborhood streets. And this this detour will go up before work begins, and it will stay in place until work is complete. There's no, no changes to this detour during the, during the project. As we move into how the project will be constructed, I may need to point this towards Tyler.
go ahead and go to the next map if you can, Tyler. So the, the next phase of the project, or I guess the first phase of the project is gonna include closing the, part, the portion of Christ's land that you see here in purple. This is the part over the big hill. And it is the, the part to the east of Canterbury, between Canterbury and the, where the Bridgemore uh, neighborhood begins. The reason, this was, this was initially, we were approaching this a different way. The, the contractor on the project wanted to, uh, or felt like it was a better idea to, to close this portion at the beginning of the project rather than at the end because there's some fill work going on on this part. It's about 700 feet from the new road into Canterbury over to where the project ends. And that road is about two feet higher than the existing road is. They, can, they want to get in there and as they start to take down the big hill, they want to be able to move some of that dirt over, go ahead and build that road up. And within about two months time, they can have that road built up to where it needs to be and then they can put the preliminary paving down and they believe that by the end of November or sometime in November that they can have this section, the 700 feet east of that Canterbury entrance up two feet higher where it needs to be and ready for traffic to use again. The part above, the, the part over the big part of the hill will remain closed throughout the duration of the project. In this initial phase, Clayton Arnold Road will remain open. Paddock Park Place or Paddock Park Drive up into Canterbury will remain open. And Kreitz Lane will also remain open down to that intersection. But Kreitz Lane from Clayton Arnold to the east would be closed as work begins there. So that's the first phase. So that in this phase, traffic to the east on Kreitz Lane between, from Canterbury toward Bridgemore, toward Lewisburg Pike uh, would, would not be able to do that. It would need to either go out to Columbia and, and around or down Thompson Station Road uh, down Clayton Arnold to Thompson Station Road, back around on Pantall. So that's that's the first stage. It's expected to last approximately 60 days. The second the second stage would be after they open this this new road up, then they will come in and and they will then close Kreitz Lane within the limits of the project, a little bit east of Clayton Arnold Road. They will also close Paddock Park Drive from where the last house is in Canterbury down to Kreitz Lane and then Clayton Arnold Road from Kreitz Lane down to where the Avenue Downs Road tie-in is. At this, at this point, a local traffic detour would be established on the road through Avenue Downs that has already been built, the roads in Canterbury that have already been built, and then the existing roads through existing Canterbury out to Kreitz Lane. This would be a, a detour really for residents in Canterbury. The, re, the regional detour out on Columbia Pike, and over on Pantall and over on Thompson Station Road, that would remain in place to keep trying to push, push all that traffic out. Um, the message board signs that I think we, we heard were requested a few weeks ago that we met and talked with Rogers in the field, they would continue to be up and continue to flash, Kreitz Lane closed, local traffic only, uh, some message similar to that. This is gonna be a longer effort because it includes taking this hill down the rest of the way and then also at the intersection where the roundabout will be and where uh, Kreitz and Clayton Arnold will intersect. That intersection is coming up in a couple of areas up to seven feet. So they're gonna have to build that up with all that material from the hill. So that's gonna be a longer term closure. It's gonna go from November-ish of this year into next year uh, for, for several months. And this, and this route would remain in place as it's shown on this map for, for that entire period. There would be no other back and forth of something's open, something's closed. It would be closed and stay that way until the project is complete. Uh, when the project is complete, they would, they would be able to go ahead and do all of the paving and marking and sign work within this area and not have to be doing it with, tra you know, with traffic going by, not having to be doing temporary closures. They can get it all done and then just open the road back up after that. These are the, the actual traffic control plans that we're issuing to the contractor, showing, showing that regional detour, um, showing the, the, the detour signs that, that are gonna be need, to, need to be posted along that detour route. Uh, so these, these would be what you see going up in the, in the coming, 
couple of weeks as, as they get into this work. Some of these signs, uh, as I get into the next sheet, you'll see the, the zoomed in area where some of these signs have already been uh, placed or would need to be moved from where they were placed uh, somewhat prematurely. And this is, this is one of those, so we're going to be introducing the barricades and closing down this portion of Kreitz Lane. You can see Bridgemore in the entrance to Bridgemore right here. Paddock Park Drive, Kreitz Lane, so you can see the area that would be closed between Clayton on the Road and Paddock Park over to near Bridgemore. And then we would close the Avenue Downs Road and the Canterbury Road uh, so, that, so that that's not open as they raise that entire area approximately two feet. The, the next phase that we went through, so then they would have this part, you can see there's, it looks a little bit different. There's a little bit of a curve in it and there's widening there because there's gonna be turn lanes at, at this new uh, Canterbury and Avenue Downs entrance. And then the, as that opens up and as this route becomes the, the detour route for, you know, from Canterbury to the south through Avenue Downs to reach the school, Thompson Station Road and, and point south from there, uh, this would be closed. Kreitz Lane would, would effectively be closed at the first entrance to Canterbury. From that point on, I think there's maybe just one or two driveways. It would be open for those residents to be able to reach their homes, uh, but, but there's, there would be no, no need for that to be open for through traffic. So that barricade would actually be down here at Canterbury. Detour signs would be out at Columbia Pike to push people who don't live in Canterbury, keep pushing them south on Columbia Pike. Same thing on Kreitz Road or Kreitz Lane back towards Pantall Road. Those detour signs at Pantall Road push people down Pantall Road towards uh, Thompson Station so that they don't even get up to Bridgemore where the road would really be closed and then have to find their way through or so that they don't get up to, to this point and make their way through one of these temporary roads uh, that's being used or one of these roads that's being used as a temporary detour through Avenue Downs or through uh, Canterbury Section 14. And it would remain this way until the project is complete This is a, a, just a larger view of the detour uh, as it would, the, the local route detour during the second stage of construction. So you can see it would be for, you know, for folks in Canterbury uh, to either go out towards Columbia Pike, they will be able to access Kreitz Lane here and go towards Lewisburg Pike. And then they'll still be able to go down to Thompson Station Road and, and effectively go either direction at that point. Um, but the, the area there around the intersection of Clayton, Arnold, and Kreitz would be closed as that work goes on. That's the, that's the, the detour plan has just been talked with the contractor and, and, and established. If, you know, if there's any sort of discussion that we want to, I'll go back to the kind of the overall map. I'm certainly happy to answer any questions about that or uh, you know, how that progression would occur or if there's any discussion we can have that at this time. So for the signalization and timing, of course, you know, the, the existing signals that are there, I think it would be, I think, I do think it would be important to watch those. And, uh, you know, the first, first things that come to mind, especially like are at the signal at Kreitz Lane right now, uh, you know, I, I came this way on my way here tonight, that the left turn to get onto Kreitz Lane, uh, that arrow is on green for a long time because there's a lot of traffic making that turn. And I think as, as this goes in, I don't know, uh, you know, Brian or, or Micah who, who programs those for the for the city, but that may, might be something to watch uh, and see if that green time needs to be taken back uh, so that it's still enough for Canterbury residents to be able to get in there. You don't want to make it harder on the people that live in there because this is already, this is going to be a project that inconveniences them. Uh, you know, you got to got to suffer through a little bit of that in order to hopefully wind up with a good project when it's over. Um, you don't want to make it unduly hard on anyone that lives in this area to, 
to be able to get in, but at the same time, you don't want to, if you leave it green, as long as it's green right now, you, you might still attract some of those uh, folks who we really want to get around the area. Um, yeah, I guess over on the Pantal side, we've got the signal at Lewisburg and Kreitz. Uh, you know, I don't know if the impact there would be necessarily quite as much because the, the connection to Pantal is still there. So that timing might still might still remain appropriate. I think the you know, the timing at Buckner, and I guess that's a, that is that a Spring Hill signal or it's our signal. It's your signal. Okay. But I, I see that in the 31 across the state road. That's right here. Mm -hmm. See the road right? Right, and and I think that might be. We can't get that south of the Spring Hills signals are not calibrated. Mm -hmm. And I think you know a lot of the folks that would be turning left here might might be turning left down here. So that might be that might be one of those movements to watch. Is do you, you know, if if you're taking away some of that capacity and ability here, then uh, you know that that might be something that gets added there. Now that takes away you know when you when you make that left turn longer from south on Columbia Pike over in the Thompson Station, uh, you're you're effectively you're stealing at that point, taking time away from folks coming north on Columbia Pike out of Spring Hill. So uh, it's, it's going to be a little bit of a balancing act because some of these areas, especially during rush hour, are already at, are already at what I would call saturation. Um, uh, and, you know, in fact, Spring Hill residents can go down to Sabre Park and so it's a little bit to come north on Fort Royal or in a cuber road to get out of this. Correct. Again, it's back to communication. Back to communication. It's it's also back to uh, you know even even clearing even clearing incidents off of those routes if there's if there's a wreck or if somebody gets pulled over uh, you know rather than having them on the shoulder you know hopefully they can get off in a parking lot where they're not going to be such a disruption uh, even if it's even if it's somebody coming up and saying hey let me help you get off the road um, just to help keep things moving a little bit every every little thing like that can can help through a situation like this. It's, it's, got a, it's got a bike lane. So. so as far as communication goes, how are we going to do that? I mean, how are we going to get that message out? Spring Hill, how are we going to effectively communicate that with them? And also, Waze, Google Maps, stuff like that. How do we put that in there that that road is closed? So for those who you know, use those outlets to be able to navigate traffic. How do we maneuver that? Regarding the first part of your question, Spring Hill, there are going to be, as a result of some emails I think you may have seen today, with some work they're going to be having on Thompson Station Road with the change of staffing down there in the various departments. There's a lot of catching up. Air attorney and planner um, are going to be meeting with their counterparts on that Thompson Station Road area that I'm referencing, but obviously by virtue of the larger discussion you're having about the impact with the detour 31 and 431 in like fashion for their project down there, um, the timing and potential, uh, potential compounding of it all is gonna necessitate this discussion sooner than later. So that's already begun as of today to try to set up a meeting for that purpose. So I think if there's a silver lining in any of that from today or this afternoon, perhaps that is it. And I think also you know, there's communication that's going to be from, uh, from the contractor to school system to emergency, uh, you know, the emergency services office at the county uh, for any temporary closures, but then certainly also for the for the larger closure in between those stages when when that detour route is getting flipped, we would need to you know first with the message boards that go up there uh, that will be out there give you know a week two week notice of, of when things are going to change from it being the initial closure to the switch over from one stage to another uh, and to any interim uh, you know any small you know, detours or closures that occur in between you know as they're as they're trying to pave maybe that section that they build here in the next couple of months, but then go back to pave it and put the final striping down when the project is clearing. Uh, they'll have to make those notifications. They'll have to get their signs up for that. 
Uh, and I think, you know, lots of the you know, Google ways, some of those places are tied in. I, I see it more with TDOT and their smart way system where when there's a, an interstate closure, you see that happen on Google pretty quick, but it's making sure that, that we notify those folks and that, that those systems get tied into that as well. Then we had also talked about the conversations within the Canterbury of the speed pillows on the major, how we're going to navigate that. So, and, and I've talked with Andrew about this, and I think what we had done was um, at a couple of locations here in Canterbury, we, we did, you know, look at, look at how that detour route goes through the neighborhood, identify a couple of uh, locations where some sort of calming device, like a big speed pillow or something, could be implemented there. Uh, we identified those locations, I think, as far as what the exact product is, it might be something more that, that staff, maybe that we would need to work with Brian or Micah or Andrew on, but um, we have looked at it to figure out where those, where those things could be. Yeah, if, if I may briefly, I know Alderman Stover, we talked about this earlier. There's going to be two motions um, I'm going to ask the board to just consider for, for, for safety when it comes up to the agenda. The first one is from what Mr. Baxter has done, identify a couple of areas for traffic calming. Uh, they would be temporary measures, but it'd be on street traffic calming. Um, I, I think we, we can talk about it now, but there wouldn't be any action until we get to it on the agenda. The other one is, I don't know if you want to talk about this now, parking along the detour route. Um, obviously, as we've talked about before, the BOMA is in charge of all roads within the municipal limits. It's at your discretion if you wanted to ban on-street parking along the detour during the course of the project. There are pros and cons, but I think from a safety standpoint, it makes sense. So just kind of teeing those up as two items, I think, we should talk about, um, and if you want to pass anything, you can by motion uh, when we get to that on the agenda. I don't know, if, Brandon, if you have anything else to add on both of those. Uh, I guess nothing really specific. I will point out we we did talk about the you know the limitation on on street parking, and uh, as Andrew, there are pros and cons. Uh, if it's you know, if there are homes under construction, if those are contractor vehicles, I think it definitely makes sense for them to to be off the road thinking especially through through the areas of avenue downs or canterbury that are that are under construction um you know those types of vehicles would be uh, in the way and, and a nuisance to, to to residents who are trying to get out and go places um, as it relates to areas within the neighborhood uh, you know on street parking uh, in one in you know on one hand it's it's a convenience thing it's you know you you own you own your house and and the ability to park in front of it um, and, and it's also a natural traffic calming strategy uh, when cars are parked out there. But at the same time, if if there's you know if it's a solid string of cars on both sides of that road through the through the entire route, and then it's effectively kind of a one way route, and it it's going to make it much harder, uh, not just for you know the traffic that we want to keep out that's that going from one place, but even internal traffic in the neighborhood getting you know getting on the routes to get out and through it's going to go it, there's a there's a fine line between what amount of on-street parking would be effective in keeping traffic moving but slowly versus what would just cause it to uh, you know come to a come to an uncomfortable halt so uh, and and i don't know that that's necessarily an amount that's really that you can legislate and and control it at this level it's almost uh, i don't know that's very difficult to do, but at the same time, you know, opening it up, and, and if there is no on-street parking, then you do have that route clear for traffic to continue to flow. But I think Alderman Stover, to your point about the traffic calming devices, that's, you know, when you take those things out, if the speed increases to a point that it's uncomfortable or unsafe, then that's when you need to do other things to manage that. It's a thought. I mean, it's definitely, I, mean, I know I've, I've mentioned to you about it I and mean, it's definitely a consideration for the board to look at and think about I mean it's <clears throat> something we've got to effectively do to limit the safety and the biggest thing is the safety that's number one of all this of, of how we're going to protect you know Canterbury from what we're going to go through but we also have to look at Pantal as well with the amount of traffic that's going to be going down through there so we we just have to communicate over communication is the best avenue on this part you know, between all parties and how we're going to do this and how we're going to effectively get through it. 
Um, I think, you know, even with the sheriff's department and how we're going to work this process and move it forward. I think with traffic calming, that's uh, what you said is a key component, emergency responders, fire, rescue, sheriff's department, school board, a number of those folks uh, certainly will, not, will be interested so as to not do it in the back. I know we have a general guidance discussion item on agenda seven as referenced by the town attorney, but like most things, devil's in the deep end. Yeah, there was a gentleman behind you with his hands up. Yeah. Hi, um, my name is Steve Shannon. I live on the can, can you come up? Mr. Shane, can you come up? Sorry. We can't. Yeah, really sorry. just wanted to add a point for you all to talk about when you're talking about the on-street parking and what you might do about it. Please keep in mind that <clears throat> the because I drive that street every day, the, the resident cars that are parked on the street is only a part of the issue. The other huge part is service vehicles. And I don't mean emergency vehicles per se, but lawn companies is the biggest thing. It's a, it's a pickup truck with a long trailer. They typically don't park very well along the curb and they don't mind parking directly across from each other. That tends to be, from my experience of five years living here, tends to be the biggest problem with traffic getting through our outside. And, and it can even be uh, Amazon you know, delivery vehicles, but it's, it's as much or more those types of vehicles that block the traffic than, because if you make rules about residents not being allowed to park, that's not going to stop. Right. The, the lawn care companies, et cetera. So. That's the challenge with this anyway. We make a, yeah. we pass a, a, a law or a, a rule that you can't park, and how do you enforce it while he's there for 30 minutes cutting grass, right. you know? Right. Yeah, uh, how do you get Amazon a for five minutes dropping a package off. Yeah, how do you get a commercial vehicle to park properly? Yeah. You know, that's... We, we had a FedEx truck, we had a FedEx truck this morning parked dead center of the road. Yeah. <laughs> running out, putting boxes on, on, and I just sat there and hawked my horn because Nobody could get around it. So I just want to preface this. We love our truck drivers. I need truck drivers, so we love them. We have to be so nice. I just wanted to bring that up for something not Thank to you. forget about Thank you. Thank you. It's Thank a good you. point. I've got a, somebody signed a sheet. Put their name down on the back of their phone. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Hi, my name is Nick Heffington. I live in the Canterbury neighborhood. Um, one of the things it was kind of brought up here was the, the whole parking situation. Of course, you have residents who are parking on the street because they don't have enough in the driveway. But the other aspect is, is the buses already have a hard enough time with the amount of street space we even have to get in around cars, let alone having additional vehicles as well. Um, kids run out, ride their bicycles, playing in the yards. To me, that's just an invitation for other things to happen. Um, I live off of Hadley Close in Paddock, and there's a stop sign there, and probably four times a day when I walk my dog, I see at least two cars uh, run that stop sign. Uh, we've had the sheriffs um, out there monitoring that. It still happens. Um, the other aspect in having, and I'm trying to understand the whole purpose of even having a detour through Canterbury. Um, my thought would be is if you not, didn't have one, there's plenty of other spaces that are out there that people can go. Um, traffic, of course, on Pantail is, is pretty bad. If you go down 31, it's about 45 minutes from Kreitz to Thompson Station Road during you know, business traffic. Of course, you also have uh, the church down there near Homestead Manor, which has had Sunday services that backs everything up. Uh, but I, I just don't know why you would have to have somebody go through or publicize the, the, the detour through Christ because not everybody's going to follow the detour. Other people are going to be following around the other side streets and such. Um, the other aspect is noise. Um, so I live right off of Christ and I hear trucks go by all the time, cars with loud mufflers. Now you're going to be driving those right through people's, you know, next door, you know, houses and, uh, with the amount of traffic that we already see in the neighborhood, let alone in the surrounding areas, it's going to create an accident. And so, you know, the thought is, is 
what is, I know there's pain points and growth pains that everybody has to go through, but to what level degree are we going to do it? Are we going to wait till somebody gets hit? Or are we going to wait till somebody, we start having increased crime because there's cars through there and people are going through cars late at night? Um, so those are some aspects there. Um, the other question I had was on the section two. It was stated that the um, it will be shut down till next year. Do we know estimated time next year? Is it like the spring, fall, winter? So, and I think we'll also come circle back to the, the schedule question, I think during the regular BOMA meeting as well during the update. Yeah. Let's take these questions one at a time. And I think the biggest one is why that detour is going through there. Why the detour is going yeah. through through here. I, I think the, the biggest reason, and, and, and we heard we heard this, was if, if we cut Canterbury off and, and their only way is, is back out to Columbia Pike, then you've got you know you've got the school down here, and what right now is a about a one mile maybe six minute drive on average longer for some maybe shorter for others. Uh, it becomes a five mile. Uh, you know, looking at what Google says during during the morning and evening rush hour, you're looking at a five mile and sometimes almost twenty minute trip to get from from Canterbury out to Columbia down to Thompson Station back around and up into the school. So. Uh, that was one thing we heard. We did hear a lot that there needs to be a route um, from Canterbury to the school kept open. I will, I'll mention, you know, I'll go back to the overall. Um, you know, there was talk of, uh, you know, the question was posed, can, can, can the whole project be shut down, everything all at one time, which would completely eliminate any ability to cross Christ Lane from Canterbury. And Canterbury would essentially be landlocked having to go Completely out to Columbia Pike. Um, that just wasn't wasn't an idea a solution that that worked well for the town. I think the contractor saw it as a, as a way to uh, maybe squeeze a couple of extra weeks out of the schedule, um, but it wasn't worth the pain that it was going to create in in that essentially landlocking Canterbury and having only one way in and out there at Columbia Pike and the the need to keep that access open to the school, the need to be able to have. Uh, you know, if there is something happening here and they need to get emergency uh, utility vehicles in a different way for that to be a possibility. So there's there's a little bit of redundancy, that detour out there, not only for the school, but also just so that you can approach that neighborhood and also bridge more from a couple of different directions in case the need arises. Hopefully it doesn't. Often, more often than not, it doesn't. But Part of that is we're not publicizing the detour, that that cut through is there. But correct me if I'm wrong, those are public streets. They're public streets. Once the yeah. town takes them over, we cannot legally shut them down. The, but the signs that he was talking about, the detours that will be on 31 and 431, will be directing people away from turning the, on Christ's Lane, unless you're a is, resident. This is the detour that will be publicized. Yes. If that, uh, oh. Well, if the reason I say that is because one, come back I know there's signs already up. On certain parts of the neighborhood, and I understand that there's maybe pre premature, but the school bus is still. I mean, if you set down section two, the second entrance for on Canterbury or the third entrance um, would be open for them to go to the school. I understand just keeping it open, but not having those signs even up to maybe not inform other people who are coming through trying to break through the traffic on 31. Those signs that are up now are going to be changed. Right. Yeah, they're going to be covered and, and done. Yes, yeah, so our thought, we so this this discussion has gone back to like 2018, right? This this whole project. So it's it started out as how do we not affect the the school traffic sure. and the schedule, uh, and then of course as with construction projects, nobody ever hits the schedule. So here we are, maybe a year later than planned, for a number of things, COVID and moving pipelines and now material delays. So now we're on a different schedule. So we're re-racking the phasing a little bit. But it, this didn't go uh, unplanned in a vacuum. If you, can you go back to the, the zoomed in so, uh, with the red, the detour? So I live right in the middle of Callaway on a downhill. So my, my house, I have an eight-year-old that plays in the street. I get it. So this decisions that we're making up here, I'm not making them in a vacuum, and I'm, I'm trying to do the best thing I can for, for our community. And this was a way that we thought, to, to your point, 
we can have traffic in Canterbury that moves to the school and we don't have to do a five mile detour, but we're not telling people to get off Christ Lane and to get to the amphitheater, for example, you go through Canterbury. We're not telling people that. You're following regional traffic signs to get yourself around to the amphitheater, for example. Right, but as, as anybody has known, if you go down and hit, I mean here, 31 was backed up past Christ. Understand. And everybody knows, well, I'll go through my old detour route, and as soon as they get to the Canterbury entrance, you'll say, oh, this is the way for the detour. But so we, we're facing two challenges there. Sure. One is, is human nature to find the fastest way using ways or whatever. Right. We, we've talked about that, and there's, candidly, there's nothing we can do about that other than taking the route of landlock and Canterbury, and here we are. And I think... And that's part of the speed pull up I don't discussion. Know, I don't know if they'd be more mad at us for this or landlock and Canterbury. I don't well, know and we, land, I mean, let, we were landlocked because when they were straightening the road or Realizing. curving the road or whatever right yeah. there, we were landlocked and having to use for their 31, which was fine. Uh, uh, yeah. I have but, a coffee mug that says I survived that too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I've made it very clear we're not going to do that any we're, we're going to try and survive that. <laughs> Trust me, I, that was long. We, we're facing a little bit of deal where you, you see some of the signs in the neighborhood because we still have to notify people. There's, I mean, we have new people moving in every day, right? Yeah, so, yeah exactly. So, yeah. so pizza drivers, you know, Uber, people Amazon. like that are coming through the neighborhood. You know, if you do Instacart and have your groceries brought, all these people need to know where to go and how to get through. But, uh, yeah, what do we do about uh, regional traffic that may want to find a shortcut? And what we're trying to do is not have signs that say, uh, here's your detour through Canterbury and then traffic calming. So the signs are gonna be pointing regionally, as he pointed out, and then as you come up to, um, what's the name of the road on Avenue Downs? I don't even know what the name of the road is yet. It cuts uh, off. So, so we're pointing detour that way, but not north through Canterbury. I mean, that's what our expectation I think would be. I don't wanna speak for you, for you. I'm pointing at them because they live in Canterbury. Right. Also. Yeah. Um, but that's he, everything he's saying is, is correct, and part of the whole speed pillow conversation came about by trying trying to eliminate that road from being a racetrack. Because I live off Chaucer, right where you make that turn, I cut up right past Alderman Alexander's house quite often. I see kids playing everywhere, over where Alderman Zen lives. He sees the same thing. We all we all get it. We know, and we're trying to make this as smooth as possible, but... Well, I, I just didn't know this would be the gentleman, you said that it was for the, for the route of the bus. The bus could always still go through the third entrance to go around, and that would... If, if after they part, get the first part done. Right, this is only talking about the second part. The first part, section one, I understand that. That works, that works great, I understand that. I'm just thinking for the section, section two, which is going to last the longest. That's what we're looking at here, right? This is what right, you're talking right. about. Yeah, yep. Right. Section two here, it's, the buses, no matter what roads are, are going to be open, they're going to have the way through the new neighborhood that's going down uh, Andrew Downs. I just don't know if even having, even signs in the front of Canterbury directing traffic, hey, this isn't a possible route. It's, it kind of deters people. Like, oh, well, I can't go down Clayton Arnold anymore. I gotta go back through 31 compared to saying, oh, there's an orange sign there that says oh, this is detour. So what, what kind of sign are you, like a, like a local, local traffic, traffic only? Yeah. So I think that's, that's are we not doing that? There, right. There, there will be, out of Columbia time, before folks even ever make that turn, there's gonna be detour signs that, that push them further down Columbia Pike. There's also gonna be signs that say local traffic only for, for Christ Lane. So when you turn, before you turn on the Christ Lane and then after you turn on the Christ Lane, you're gonna see signs that say, you're going to see signs that say local traffic only. Well, that's the. Yeah, because I know the sheriff, you know, the sheriff's department is not a big fan of the Canterbury neighborhood already. The numerous complaints are valid complaints. I talked to the sheriff, he loves Canterbury. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know, you can speak for him. Here's the thing about we got your. got the King's Ann here tonight, he can speak for him. Here's the thing about your comment about no through traffic, and we talked about this, and these two gentlemen can answer this question a lot better than we can. There's a very thin line on how you can word it. And it's all in the verbiage and how you say it. I was a big fan of no through traffic. I don't know if you can say it or not, but that's the that's the question. Is we have to skirt that line at the best of our ability of what we're going to do before we get in trouble. You mean right? Right there. Right there. Right there. I believe that 
that there will be a sign because we're having to put a barricade there. There will be a sign that would point that route beginning there to go through. So if you if you, you miss if you miss the one on Columbia, you get to that point. And since that's where the road is closed, by you know by code, what we're required to do is is provide that route from that point. Effectively, this this makes it you know you go down there once or twice by accident. A lot of the people who are trying to go through right. and coming through the neighborhood that way yeah. is not short yeah. by any means. So I, it's one of those things, just like with the amphitheater opening, how terrible traffic was there. It's going to take two or three times with people making the wrong okay. turn to realize, oh, I'm not doing that way again. Well, and I ask that maybe when you guys are deciding to vote on the no road, you know, no good parts part of the road, because that first entrance, you got one car parked and people coming in and out all the time well, already, there's not that space, let alone any other kind of service vehicles or anything like that. So having that in force, I know is going to be temptation, but then there's there's going to be those roadblocks, and I, I, I just hate all that traffic to start backing up even further by that space. I think we have another three minutes. Two minutes. One minute. All right, Sid Heffington, uh, Redwood Trail. Just give you an idea of the amount of traffic. I know maybe you've done something, but on my street, I'm not even in this section right here. I'm kind of up Westerham. Mm -hmm. There's over 350 cars a day that come by my house. Uh, the traffic having nobody, nobody parking is great. One of the things, if you could do that in there, is also make sure that there's no parking anywhere in the area next to the corners. A lot of people park across the street from their house and it's right on a corner and when you're trying to turn left you can't see whether there's any traffic coming because they got you blocked so um would like to have no traffic more calming i hate road speed bumps but the more you got the more the less people are going to take as an alternate all right we've got two minutes yeah so with this sign that it's at the canterbury the first entrance um Realizing that there is a there necessitates a detour sign there. I'm with these guys. Like our, our plan was never to funnel all the traffic through Canterbury. I know that's not what, what you're saying, but because there is a sign there, if somebody does turn to your point and misses it, can we put a, another local traffic only sign underneath the detour sign? It's on the same pole. Yes, I think I think so. Let me, so I'll, 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 I say I'll look add and see. that to the construction documents or whatever. I'll see how many I'll see how many places we can add a sign that says local traffic <laughs> only or something like that. Whatever yeah. verbiage you can put on those to the to tour is. Well, I think local traffic only is kind of the standard. I think there may be some alternatives. Uh, I yeah, I don't know if we can do no through traffic since there is a route, but I'll I'll see what we can do and how whatever we can do there, we'll we'll go back and look at. Mm -hmm. and, and that may be, I guess that might be something that would have to come from the town as the jurisdictional agency, but uh, I, I don't know that, you know, like a consultant, I don't know that they would necessarily take my word for Absolutely. it that the word's closed. But. That's, that's Tyler's territory, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Also, one last point. So with the, the, gray to, the Greystone Quarry, the amphitheater, has particularly been a, a topic of conversation. So whatever we can do to communicate with them about not... Are they here? Is they are. Hey, I didn't see you back there. <laughs> whatever we can do to communicate on, on uh, event day, you know, did, remember Kreitz Lane's closed or Planet Head and all that. I know y'all are doing that already, but um, for the next 500 days. And I, I know I'll say real quick in response to that. I know, Brian, we talked, y'all have one message board. If there's two more in use on this project, maybe for those weekends where there's a show, maybe those get relocated over somewhere off Lewisburg. Where they idea. can where they can flash a, a, a message that says Kreitz Lane closed, so that because folks that are going to that quarry they may not be familiar with the area, and that would just be a way to communicate and educate. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Yeah. I just have one question that you didn't answer. What was the time frame on phase one and phase two? With, I'll do that real quick if that's all right. Uh, so real quick, phase one about sixty days for. Let me go back one slide. 60 days for this, so by the end of November, by Thanksgiving, they should be switching over to this. Because of the amount of work required to take down the hill and build up the area around the proposed roundabout and some of the other things they need to do, that's going to that's gonna go on into the summer, perhaps even into the fall. But right now, they do expect to be able to pave that 
uh, you know, maybe even by this time next year, but their contract would be over at the end of next year, so they would have to do it by then. Okay.